Okay, so I found my piece. I found what we're gonna use to flip today. And it is a doozy, y'all. This has been eaten by a small animal. And I'm gonna show you all the crazy detail on it. I have a plan, it's gonna be fabulous. Let's get ready to have some fun. Hello and welcome to Dixie Bell TV. This is DBTV and my name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RVA. I'm also a Dixie Bell brand ambassador and this video is kind of a special one. Get ready to join me on this fun painting journey. This journey begins at my own front door. Let's go for a ride and find out what we're gonna do today. Okay, so I'm in the car and we're headed to the Remix Market today. We're gonna go find out if they have a fabulous piece of furniture for us. We're gonna do something great with Dixie Bell Paint Products. Let's go on an adventure. In today's episode one of DBTV, I'm going to show you how to find a project, get it ready for paint. This video is all about prep and thrifting. The Remix Market is located in Ashland, Virginia. It's only about a 25 minute drive from me and they have the best stuff. They also have Dixie Bell paint products. Let's go check out the Remix Market. It's furniture picking day. So this is the first part to every piece that you see me paint, finding that special piece that I am going to paint and transform into something crazy special. Let's take a walk to the store and see what we can find. I love supporting one of a kind small businesses. Shopping local and finding these little local treasures are kind of what makes the journey very special to me. First up, I saw this beautiful 1970s style dresser. Let's have a closer look at it and talk about why I didn't choose it. This piece had some really great features. Those really ornate carvings in the front, all the hardware was there, but the top of this piece was veneer. It was a manufactured piece, which means it's probably really heavy, but I'll still leave it on the possible list. It's a maybe for me. Ooh, check out this vintage sewing table. So cool but I'm looking for something a little bit bigger. Now at this point, I kind of got distracted by these ceramic lamps. I thought about possibly using slick stick on top of these lamps and redoing them, but on closer inspection, the little rose petals were a bit damaged and broken, so we'll pass on these. When you're shopping for a piece of furniture to paint, it's kind of important to look for solid wood. If it's solid wood, it's going to make your job easier as a painter. Turn it around, look at the back, open the drawers, see if you can find a maker's mark inside. This piece is a strong candidate. It's solid wood, has beautiful dovetail drawers, and is in great condition. And at $30, this one hits the right price point for sure. Look at all the beautiful pieces. But wait, what's that right there? Let's have a closer look because this looks kind of fun. So this is like a manufactured wood secretary. Kind of neat, right? Let's see, how much does it cost? Well, the price looks right, but what is that? That is some serious damage right there in the front panel. Let's have a closer look and see what we can do. When I'm looking at pieces that I'm gonna paint, I often look at detail. I love the columns and the tiny individual drawers on the top of this piece. I really think I can make it work, but we're gonna have to assess those damages and figure out how we're gonna repair them. So let's keep looking. We're hunting down the most perfect piece to paint today. This, this was stunning, but <laughs> the price was not. But I get it, it's a beautiful East Lake vintage piece of furniture. This is definitely a piece that I would consider not painting. Here's a beautiful desk. Now this is a great option for refinishing. You could stain the top, change out the hardware, use a little gel stain just to fix up that worn mark on the front and you would be good to go. I like this one. So, can you guess, which one did I pick? You guys, I found my piece. I found what I am going to flip. This is gonna be a big journey. 
I mean, this is not going to be an easy accomplishment, but I'm kind of excited because when something is such an ugly duckling, I mean, literally eaten by a small animal and I get to make it over and give it new life, that to me is kind of exciting. So let's get ready to have some fun. The Remix Market in Ashland, Virginia also carries the Dixie Belle Paint products. This is a great option for somebody who's coming in to find a piece of furniture and then choose the color that they would like. What color do you think we should paint that secretary? I kind of am getting an idea. I think maybe blues. What do we think? Should we do a little whimsical, a little whimsical blue number? Let's check out the colors. All right, blue is kind of like my neutral. I really don't paint a lot of black or white, but I paint a lot of blue. I'm for sure gonna do antebellum. We'll see what I end up with. I got her to load it up. Let's get this thing in the car. So what you're seeing here is actually like a creature in the wild. This is how I do it, y'all, by myself all the time. I always end up picking the heaviest of pieces of furniture, but where there's a will, there's a way, and I will get this in the minivan, I swear. Okay, at this point, we're about 10 seconds away from me doubting myself. <laughs> it was a lot heavier than I thought, but leverage people, I can push it up onto that little kind of cloth in the back seat and then slide it on in. Now you know the hidden secret of how furniture painters stay in shape. Okay, so I think uh, we're ready to begin, right? Like I dragged this thing home. Of course, of course, I picked the item that weighed 11 billion pounds. I mean, you saw me shove that sucker in the back of my van and my husband had to drag it in the house for me. But listen, it's here, it's on casters. We are ready to begin. Let's go over why I chose this piece and what we are gonna do to make it fabulous. Okay, so I am known for always choosing an ugly duckling. I like the pieces that are amazing in their transformations. When you look at them, you think, well, that is literal garbage. Like who? Who wants that? Who wants to take this on? Usually it's me. I actually pick pieces from the trash. I get pieces donated to me. I do a lot of stuff within the community and donating back to local charities. And for me to find an ugly duckling, a diamond in the rough is actually pretty exciting. This is the kind of stuff that gets me jazzed up as an artist because I get excited about what it could be. I chose this piece because of all the crazy lines. When you look at this piece, it is a manufactured wood, right? It's an MDF board. Well, what is MDF board? You can see it right here. It means a particle board with a veneer-like surface. That means we're gonna do some extra steps in our prep work, but we're gonna get it ready to be painted, but we're gonna have a lot of prep work that's gonna go into this. So let's go over what we need to do for this MDF Ugly Duckling Beauty to make it Dixie Belle fabulous, a little bit of magic, a little bit of imagination, and some fun with paint. So I picked this piece because of the crazy lines, right? You can do fun things. There's little latches in here. You can actually push these latches, if I can do it at the same time, and put this down to be like a little table. I'm sitting on a stool. This is up on caster wheels. So right now it's sitting a little bit higher than it normally would. But it's got this fun little insert here. There's little drawers. And then of course the front that's been eaten by some random wild animal. Who knows what happened to this little beast? But we have some serious damage to do, and I'm gonna show you exactly how we can get it ready for paint, because proper prep is the thing that's gonna make your paint finish last. If you don't take the time to do stuff right before you get started, you're gonna be sorry in the long run. Let's talk prep. Okay, so we talked about this being an MDF board, and you can kind of see it here on the piece where this is kind of like a a raw wood finish with like a veneer on the outside. Another good way for you to look at this is if you actually turn it around. Sometimes in the back of pieces, you're able to really get in and see how things are made. By getting in and looking at these details, you can determine if a piece is real wood or raw wood, what you're gonna do for prep. Also, take note, when somebody bought this new, they spent $469.95. That's crazy. I got it from the Remix Market in a deal to trade my work to give them something to donate to a local charity. We're gonna make this fun and fabulous. Let's talk prep because this, my friends, this means slick stick. 
So why would I put slick stick on this piece, right? Because it's, it's wood. People are going to look at it and say, this is still wood. You can still paint this. Well, sure you can. But see this kind of shiny plasticized finish that's on the piece? Whatever anything has that shiny, shiny surface, it makes me think that you would need to sand it down quite a bit in order to get it ready for paint. Because paint is not going to stick, no matter what paint you're using, it's not going to stick to a shiny, shiny MDF surface like this, okay? So, I paint in my house. This is actually my dining room, y'all. I paint right here in my dining room. <laughs> so, I cannot sand and make this house any dirtier than it already is with kids, husband, dogs, me working. It's a hot mess. So to make this as simple as possible, what I'm going to do is remove all of the hardware. I'm going to clean this with white lightning. This is your, your powder-based cleanser that you're gonna disperse into water and then spray, clean, and rinse again with water. This is gonna degloss a little bit and get ready for my next step, which is a slight sand scuff. What's a sand scuff? Don't worry, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna do this piece together, 100% of the way together, Every single thing that I do, you're gonna see. All right, then we're gonna hop into some slick stick. So slick stick is your gripper. It's your bonder for slick and shiny surfaces. This is great for metal, this is great for plastic, this is great for MDF shiny surfaces like this piece. A manufactured wood sometimes needs the extra step. And since I can't sand down things in my home, this is what I do. So let's talk about slick stick and how to apply it. So slick stick only comes in one color, which is white. I mean, you can tint it a tiny bit if necessary. I'm talking like a tablespoon of caviar if you needed to darken it a touch, but I like to keep it in its original formula so it does the best job possible for me. Slick stick can be applied with a roller. You can apply it with a brush. You can apply it with a throwaway brush. Here's my handy dandy tip of the day. Use something to apply this that you can throw away in the garbage afterwards because you don't want to wash slick stick down your sink, okay? So you're gonna see me use a foam roller that I just toss in the garbage after I'm finished and you're gonna see me use a throwaway chip brush that I can use to get into all the crevices and get in all the corners that my roller cannot. Again, chuck it in the bin when you're done with it because you don't need to keep it. Um, I will wrap my roller in a plastic bag for the two hours in between my coats of slick stick but other than that, I'm gonna throw it away when I'm done. You will never catch me using my fancy pants, Dixie Bob brushes <laughs> with slick stick. It's always gonna be something I can throw away. So now you know what it does and all of the things. Well, how do, you, how do you get it on? What do you do? What are the rules? There are rules for slick stick that you do need to follow. If you don't follow the rules, it's not gonna give you that gripping surface that you need for your chalk mineral paint or your silk mineral paint or whatever it is that you're doing to your project, okay? Your surface has been cleaned with white lightning, you've rinsed it, you've given it a scuff sand, you're going on and you're rollering on that first coat of slick stick. It's not gonna look pretty, I'm not gonna lie. I like the roller to keep kind of a smoother motion because this is a little bit thicker of a formula than say a regular chalk mineral paint. So using the roller keeps it kind of smooth. If you wanted, after that first coat dries, you could slightly sand to remove any of that, you know, little bit of texture that might be on there. I usually do not. Then you're gonna wait two to four hours after you apply that first coat of slick stick, okay? And this is important business. You need that, that first coat to get in here and get dry, okay? Once that two to four hours has passed after you put that first coat on, come on back in and do your second. Two coats of slick stick is recommended on each project. Then there's one more step. One more before we're ready for paint. I know this is a lot of work, but this is the stuff you have to do to get ready. You're going to need to wait 24 hours before you open up your paint and get to it, okay? You need to wait 24 hours for this slick stick to cure on your piece. Once it's cured and dried for 24 hours, you are totally ready to go. You can paint your little heart out. All right, let's get started. Handy dandy tip of the day number what, two so far? 
There's pokey nails on here. Did y'all see me stab my finger with a pokey nail? So we know that this part has been eaten by uh, this trim by some wild animal, I'm assuming a dog. But what you didn't know or maybe see close up is that there's tiny little pokey nails sticking out and I stabbed myself right in the finger <laughs> with the nail when I was cleaning. Ouch, but you know, you go with the flow. This is furniture painter problems. Keep a stash of band-aids on hand for uh, days like this. Bend it up and keep on going. Next up, after this clean, we're gonna sand the piece and I'm gonna baby my poor little finger that got stabbed with the nail. Don't worry, I've had my tetanus shot. I will be safe, I promise. It's all good at the end of the day. So obviously this is me now hammering all the tiny nails into the piece. The ones that I couldn't take out, I hammered them flat. I then used my sander to scuff sand. This just gives the paint a little bit of tooth to grab onto. I'm gonna do this to all the whole area, like any shiny areas all around, give it a wipe and then we're ready to go. So out of all the Dixie Belle paint products, Slick Stick is something that I use probably the most. Because I paint in my dining room like I told you, I don't have the time or the space to sand everything down to give it enough tooth to grab onto. Slick Stick is going to be my save the day product. It's my gripper for any slick or shiny surfaces. I find using a small foam roller really helps me cover the areas quickly, along with having minimal amounts of brush strokes. Don't forget that you need to wait the optimal two to four hours in between applications of Slick Stick, and then you still need to wait 24 hours before you add your paint on top of the Slick Stick. Okay, so you can do these small repairs with Dixie Bell Mud, which is my plan for going in around the bigger pieces, but where this rough area is, and I know I can't sand it back to flat, I'm gonna be using something called Would You Bend. Would You Bend is a fantastic molding that you heat up, and then when you heat it, it becomes like bendable and malleable, and you can put it anywhere. You can stick it on with wood glue. It is super easy to use. So I have two on the floor here. One I've already opened. This is Would You Bend trim number 710. This is kind of like a little scrolly design right there. And then this is Would You Bend number 715. This is more like a Greek key pattern. I've already used like this much of this. I just wanna know that I'm gonna have enough to go around. This looks a little skinnier than this one. So I think I'm probably gonna use this trim only because it's a little bit wider and I wanna cover this whole entire area. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to use this, how to apply it. You can put it on before your slick stick, you can put it on after, it really doesn't matter. This is the part of the trim that I'm working on fixing. Let's jump in. So what do you need to, um, to use some wood you bend? Well, it's, it's quite easy. You're gonna need a heat source, whether it be a hair dryer or a heat gun or even a pancake griddle, whatever you have that's gonna give you that heated surface. Because when wood you bend arrives to you, it's pretty hard like this, right? You can tap it. If you try and roll it now when it's in this state, you're going to break it. But let me show you what happens when you heat it up, okay? I'm gonna put it on here just so I can keep you in nice and close. Turn my heat gun on. Try not to injure my other hand because y'all, one injury enough, 
that's enough for me. So now let me show you what happened. Now that I've heated up this would you bend, look, it becomes bendy. So I'm gonna unroll this. I'm gonna actually unroll this with my heat gun, the whole entire thing, make it nice and straight so that I can kind of figure out how much I need. I also have a measuring tape so I can measure off these edges, but we're gonna heat it up, get it straight, and then we're gonna go from there. All right, let's do it. Okay, so I measured this distance, right? And I and I gave myself a little bit of wiggle room, okay? I give myself an inch and a half, or sorry, a half an inch to an inch of space extra so that when I know I come in and cut it, I'm gonna be able to cut it on the diagonal or cut it however I like. You can cut this with scissors, you cut this with a sharp knife. Okay, what I'm gonna do is get this nice and straight, so I'm gonna heat it again. Once I get it really straight, I'm going to apply my wood glue. You use basic wood glue. This is also available on the Dixie Bell paint page. Um, once you glue that on, you are able to then get it and stick it on the surface. I can cut it after I get it on there. So I'm actually gonna give myself a little bit of room, cut it on the diagonal, same with down here and we're gonna to start to work and cover up this trim, all right? So first things first, I have to go and heat it up again. Once I heat it, it becomes bendy and I can shape it then, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna just like kind of hold it for a minute, let it get kind of straight and I'm going to get my wood glue out. Here's the deal. I never close the lids on my wood glue. So I actually have to just use a paintbrush and like brush my glue on because that's how we roll over here. I don't close lids well. <laughs> I should know better by now, but I don't. Okay, so here's my glue on my little would you bend. I'm gonna stick it on a little bit higher than my edge, right? And I'm gonna go straight down, all the way down to this corner. Now, if you get a little bit of glue coming at the edge, it doesn't matter. You can get that off with a damp paintbrush. It really doesn't. Now here's my little tip. You have to heat your wood glue or wood you bend again once you get it on the piece. Heating it again ensures that you're getting it flat, right flat to the surface, okay? Because it's not gonna work good if it's not flat. Now I'm gonna cover all of these damages. I'm gonna get this on here and I'm gonna cut a small line with my knife. I'm gonna cut on the diagonal so when I attach the next piece, I can line them up together. Once you um, cut this, you can also sand it. You can do whatever you want, okay? It's, it's not hard to use would you bend. You just actually can trim it, cut it, sand it, or bend it. So there's my two edges. So I've got an edge cut this way and an edge cut this way. Now when I come in here and do my second coat of slick stick, I'll just go right over top of the work that I just did. Covering this, it doesn't matter. Do I need to slick stick it? No, but will I? whatever it'll all be the same so this part of this trim this would you bend trim number 715 is going to go all the way around and i'm going to be able to bend it up and around this bend it's really cool i'm going to put you guys on fast motion you can watch me do the whole thing Another really neat fact about Would You Bend is that you can stain it, sand it, paint it. I've used it on the backings of drawer knobs, like drilled through a backing plate to create a really ornate feature. Its uses are crazy. I use it a lot and I use it often, especially for fixing small areas like this, where I know sanding is just not an option. You can cover it easily and it looks amazing.
Since this would you bend trim roll is quite thin, heating it up allows you to cut it very easily. You can use a knife, but I find using scissors is honestly the easiest way to go about it. Time to fix the front of this crazy dog eaten cabinet. I do think it was a dog, but I really feel sorry for it. If I hurt my tiny finger when I was cleaning it and those pokey nails, can you imagine what a poor puppy would have been up to on this piece? It's crazy. Anyways, back to the subject at hand. Let's tape off the sides of the trim and apply Dixie Belle's mud. So why did I tape off the sides of the trim? Well, taping off the sides of the trim is just gonna allow a protective edge when I apply my mud. If any of my mud gets where I don't want it to be, it's gonna be easy to pull that tape off and then remove the mud from any of the areas where I just don't want it to stick. So I'm kind of a messy girl. I like to use my hands and my fingers a lot, but you could use a spatula as well. I just filled in these areas with Dixie Belle mud in white. I'm gonna build up the layers. I think it took me actually two different layers to build it up to the, the size of the trim where I want it to be. This way, when I come in and sand it back, I can make it look like it's supposed to be there. So now you're gonna see me using a really fancy tool. Have you seen it before? <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a tool from the transfer tube. You know those little sticks that you use to burnish your transfers down? I save them. I use them for everything. I've used them to build up the size of drawers. I use them to paint drag across pieces. And here I'm using it to smooth my mud. So you might ask, why am I using mud rather than using like a heavy duty wood filler? When you sand your Dixie Belle mud, it is completely smooth. It has by far been the best tool that I use to fill in spots of missing trim or holes on an old dresser where there might've been hardware. Because you can sand it so smooth and flat with different grits of sandpaper, it virtually disappears. So here we go with that second coat of slick stick. Remember, you have to wait two to four hours before you apply it on top of your project. So I save my rollers in a plastic bag. This way, I don't have to get out a new one. I can save my pennies and just use the one that I had before. Putting it in a plastic bag, wrapping it tight, is just gonna save you time, money, and effort. So making sure I apply that second coat to my piece with the roller, keeping it nice and smooth and even. You can always sand your slick stick a tiny bit too after you're finished to make sure that you don't have any brush strokes. <laughs> 